Oh, hey everyone, this is Mr. John from the Harold Washington Library Center. I was just putting one last finishing touch on my art box. And an art box is a really cool project that you can do at home, where basically you take an empty box and turn it into a piece of art. And it's really kind of up to you how to go about doing that. I'm gonna show you a couple techniques today um, on how you can turn a plain old box into an art box, but you can really use your imagination and use what other whatever other techniques that you might have in mind. So um, in my case, I kind of turned this partially into a diorama, which is basically when you use a box to create a scene, but I also kind of used it to make a little collection area to show off my little crochet fox here. But you may also just want to decorate the outside of your box and leave the inside plain and use it to keep special objects. Um, you may have received an art box kit at your local Chicago Public Library, but I'm still gonna go over some of the materials that you need in order to create an art box. Just in case you weren't able to pick up a kit at the local branch, at your local branch rather. So first of all, you need an empty box. This is the kind that our kits came in. It's just a plain white box that opens up like this. We also provided a couple sheets of construction paper in different colors. We also provided some tissue paper in different colors, and we also provided you with glue sticks inside the kit. Uh, you do need some other materials that we did not provide in the kits. Uh, basically, you'll need some scissors, a ruler is really helpful, and some tape. So I'm gonna show you a couple techniques. Um, to create a cool scene inside of your box. So basically a lot of what I'm gonna show you uh, will end up leading towards a diorama. But again, these are just a few techniques you can try at home and it's really up to you how to create your art box. So basically the first thing I wanna say is to give you a little tip. Um, if you have a box like this and you want it to still be able to open and close, we're gonna make sure to avoid attaching anything up here to where this flap goes in. Because if we glue anything here, inside we're not going to be able to close it so I'm actually going to orient the box this way and glue everything down here and call this the bottom. The first technique I want to show you is called layering and this is a cool way to create depth inside the box. The box is only about an inch and a half to two inches deep but with this technique you can create a lot of depth. So basically today I want to create kind of a, a little bit of a city scene so I cr cut out these three shapes ahead of time. Basically, they're little buildings. I also, um, I use different colors. I use different shapes and I also drew on them. Um, when you do this, you wanna be sure to leave a little extra space on the bottom because basically what we're gonna do is fold at the bottom to create a little tab so we can glue the shapes onto the bottom of our box. However, for the first shape, I'm actually gonna glue this directly to the back of the box. And that will give the impression of this being really far away in the back. So I'm just gonna add some glue here. I'm gonna glue this directly to the back of the box here. So you can see. And then for my second shape, which is this building, I'm basically gonna fold a tiny bit of the bottom to create a little tab like this. So it's about a half an inch. And then I'm gonna just add some glue here to the bottom. And then I'm gonna glue this about halfway between the back of the box and the front of the box. Oops, see how I did that? See, so it's kind of like in the middle there. And then I'm gonna repeat the same thing with this building, I'm gonna fold it on the bottom to create a little tab. Add some glue. And then I'm going to glue this right at the front of the box. Whoops, I can't see that. See, so I basically basically created three different layers to create some depth. And it's a little tricky to show you because this is laying flat, but if I was to um, show you upright, 
there would be space in between these and it would create an, uh, an illusion of depth. So for the next technique, I'm actually gonna show you how to float something, air quotes, float something in your box. So basically, in order to do that, we're gonna start with a little strip of paper. This is a two and a half inch wide by three and a half inch long piece of paper and the color doesn't really matter. And then we're gonna roll this into a cylinder. Like this. And then I'm just gonna take some tape to tape that shut. Add a little more tape here. I just used this marker to help me roll it. it. Just helped me get a nice clean cylinder shape. So basically, once you have your cylinder like this, we are going to cut about six half inch uh, slits on both ends of the cylinder. So let's see, that's one. I'm gonna go right directly opposite two. And I'm trying to space them as evenly as possible. So I did that on this end. And I'm gonna do it on the opposite side. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so now basically I'm gonna push these down. And I cut this so it was two and a half inches um, tall, but it's really kind of up to you um, how tall you want to make this. And I'll show you what it looks like. So basically now I want to float something up here in this area here. So as you can see, I kind of created these tabs. And basically, I'm going to put glue on these tabs. And I'm gonna glue it down here. But now I have a little smiley sun I made earlier. And really this can be anything you want. You can cut a cloud out or whatever other shape you want. And then I'm gonna just put some glue on the back here. And then I'm gonna attach it right there. See, and it gives the illusion of my sun floating in the sky. Although now that I'm looking at it, I guess it um, would make sense for this to be further back. And that's when uh, you can decide how tall to make this. Now that I'm looking at it, maybe I should have made this a lot shorter so that the sun would float behind this building. But that's okay. I'm gonna leave it like this for now. Let that glue dry. See, it's a pretty cool scene. Whoops. Trust me, it'll look a lot better when it's standing up. So those are a couple techniques you can uh, use to create a little bit of a diorama effect. You might wanna create a scene totally out of your imagination, or maybe you can create a scene out of your favorite book. But now I'm actually gonna show you another cool technique that um, you might wanna use to create a completely different kind of box. There was a really famous artist named Joseph Cornell who created boxes in which he displayed a lot of found objects. So some of his boxes had nice separations where he um, would then place different objects inside of his box. So I'm gonna show you how you can make separations inside your box. So basically, I'm gonna start off with a three inch wide strip of paper. And I'm gonna show you how to do this with a three inch wide strip of paper. But again, this is something you could adjust um, on your own. And then the length is gonna kind of depend on where you want your separations to be. Um, this one will actually work out pretty well. We might have to trim this um, in a bit, but it'll work out to divide our box in half. So basically you take your three inch wide strip of paper, fold it in half the long way, basically a hot dog fold. Give that a nice crease. 
And now we want to fold this bottom edge up to the top edge. And again, give that a nice crease. We're going to flip it over and do the same thing. So I'm going to fold this bottom edge up to the top edge. And basically from the side, oops, your paper will kind of look like a W. But now what I'm going to do is kind of figure out if this will fit. It's a little long, so I'm just going to snip the very tip off. And you can always use a ruler for this. I'm just kind of eyeballing it right now. Oh, see, that fits really well. So basically, see, it's a W, but I'm gonna pinch the top shut like this, add glue all along here, and then place it where I want, which is basically in the middle. So let me add my glue all along here. Position that right here in the middle. Okay, so now I'm going to add some separations. Basically, here is my three inch wide strip of paper. I already cut it to the length I want. I cut it, I folded it in half rather. Then I'm going to just fold the bottom edge to meet the top edge on one side, flip it over and fold it again on this side so the bottom edge again meets the top edge. Um, then I'm gonna add some glue and I'm gonna place that where I want. This one's gonna go down here. Then I think I'm gonna add just one more separation over here. And see this one, I made sure to cut a little bit short, just to make sure I'm not blocking this area. And that way, as I mentioned earlier, your box can still close. Um, earlier, I forgot to mention, when I was talking about the different materials you need to do this project, that um, you can really use anything. Here again, my little fox is making an appearance. I also have this little robot figure I have. See, so with these separations, I turn this into a cute little collection box. Whoops, my fox is a little big, so he doesn't quite fit in there, but you can find objects that fit nicely into your box. And then if you wanted to, you could place this somewhere to display your collection. So the last thing I wanted to show you is that you can for sure decorate your box. And I won't go too much into this because decorating is very uh, open-ended and you can do many things. Uh, as you can see here on this box, I just used some of the tissue paper to cut out a little design. Um, here you can see I actually scrunched up the little paper, the tissue paper to create a little bit of a three-dimensional element there. And um, I think actually for my cityscape that I started earlier, um, I think I would probably decorate this with some of the tissue paper on the outside to create a little bit of water effect like this. And I might even use some of the tissue paper on the inside as well to kind of go through here to simulate maybe the lake traveling through the city. But again, I want to encourage you to try many different techniques. Use your imagination to create your very own scene. If you're going to go for a diorama or you can um, just gather up all your favorite items around the house to create a little collection box like this. Or you can simply decorate the outside of your box like this and just leave the inside plain uh, just so you have a beautiful decorated box. I think empty boxes have so much potential and I really look forward to seeing what you all make with your art boxes. Um, once you finish your art box, we would love to see your project. So please post pictures on social media and you can use the hashtag, hashtag CPL Kids, or you can email us photos at cplkids at shypublib.org. We would love to see what you make. I hope you all have a great summer. I hope you uh, make summer years and have a great time starting with art. Bye everyone.